I once talked to a top uh, book editor in New York City, and we had a discussion on why there actually are very few sports novels that seem to do well. I mean, there's been one, North Dallas 40 was one, although actually it was kind of a thinly veiled version of the Dallas Cowboys. Pete Gent wrote that. You know, Bang the Drum Slowly did pretty well. You know, there's a couple others. Blue Chips was kind of an interesting movie in that. But for the most part, sports has not spawned a ton of really great fiction. And he said to me that, that it's, a, it's because sports is too weird in real life. You can't make it up. Which brings us to the Browns game this week in Cincinnati. I want to know who, when the season opened, I'm talking about this season, 2018, would have thought after 10 games, Greg Williams would be the head coach, Freddie Kitchens, most of us didn't even know his name, would be calling the plays, Todd Haley would have been fired over, quote, internal discord, and Hugh Jackson would have been fired, but most of us probably would have guessed that, but we would have been thinking Haley was going to take over. And on top of it all, okay, here we are, game number 11, the Browns play in Cincinnati, where Hugh Jackson's on the staff with Marvin Lewis. Hugh! And, of course, Hugh went around giving his I'm still a great coach media tour for quite a while. It's like, and every time he talked, it was like made my head want to explode. Nobody's going to say that Hugh Jackson was given a wealth of talent or whatever. But I'm just going to throw this number out. Two, ten, and one. Two, ten, and one. Two victories, ten losses, one tie, games decided by three or fewer points. Two, ten, and one. I mean, even if you're kind of coaching a bad team, I think you would do better Two ten and one, four and nine, maybe something like that. So, on the surface, I looked at Hugh Jackson, and it's like, and I didn't even see anybody ask him, "Well, Hugh, what about losing all these close games? Isn't any of that on you?" And also, Hugh, when you took that job with Sashi Brown and Jimmy Haslam, they explained, you know, they're going to tear this roster down. It's going to be tough going for a while. So, you know, you look at that, and then finally, I think the most um, revealing part of what came after Hugh Jackson was fired, you know, one was the eternal discord. You know, Hugh had a lot of that, be it with, with Sashi Brown, then later with Todd Haley. But the fact that when Greg Williams took over, John Dorsey, general manager, by the way, this is about John Dorsey. He's been, the N N N he's been in the NFL for 26 years. 19 of those years, the different teams he's been with, went to the playoffs. Think about that. While we're talking 2-10 and 1, he's talking 19 to 26. His team's going to the playoffs. Like him watching this stuff, I mean, it's like total culture shock to him. That's part of the reason I think they made the move they did. He talks about how Greg Williams is bringing one discipline to the team. You know, fewer penalties. Secondly, attention to detail. And then I was told that not just Dorsey, but the entire football operation in the front office thought that the, the practices look more organized and crisper and are creating a better environment for Baker Mayfield, Nick Chubb, Miles Garrett, all these other players to develop. But just think about it again. You can't make it up. Here we are, Thanksgiving week, and everybody knew Greg Williams would be the head coach. Freddie Kitchens would be calling the plays. And Hugh Jackson would be in Cincinnati helping Marvin Lewis. 